everybody tonight. We asked Wednesday, everybody who was going to be back, we asked for a reason. The Lord has laid on her heart a message, and I hope it pricks the hearts in this place here tonight. Because Jesus, he's fixing to come back. And I'm going to tell you, the world say that anything goes. But Jesus is fixing to come back for the church. They ain't but one church. Amen. He's coming back for the church, for his bride that has made herself ready. Amen. And there's a call. I said both and went ahead and preached it. It's the same spirit. It's the same anointing. There's a call that's going out today. And it's going out to people. It's going out to teenagers. It's going out to adults. It's going out to middle age. It's going out to all ages. That call. And if we don't answer the call, and it's more than just a call to come to an altar of repentance and get your life right with Jesus. It's more than that. It's more than just what anybody else says, but it's according to what his word tells us. When we come to him, and as I was thinking on this today, Mr. Jamie said it, Brother Bowen said it earlier, we got in a, a, in a place to where we are afraid of what we hear. We was talking about this today. I should not turn and look at Sister Jamie, because I know that when God is spot on, we, we hear so much things and it causes the man of God or whoever it is that you can testify, spirit moves upon you, it'll cause you not, your flesh don't want to say anything to hurt people. And we don't try to go around just to hurt people. But there's a place that we've got to come to that we've got to be obedient to the voice of God. And we're sitting around, as I thought about this today, we're sitting around, we'll read here in a little bit, we're sitting around, if the Lord permit, we're sitting around in the house of God and we're bidden to do things in our life to get our life straightened up with God. And we take them, we turn him away. But all at the same time, as he's bidding us, what we're doing, we're sitting in the house of God. Brother Hunter preached special on this a long time ago when he first started out. We're eating from the master's table. And then we'll go back out and we'll start eating at the devil's table. Amen. You can't feast at two tables. Amen. You're going to have to choose one. You choose. We're going to have to choose one. Amen. So it's either Jesus or the devil. Amen. And that goes for me as well as you. I'm not exempt just because Jesus said, hey, Brother Larry, I'm going to put you over at Woodfield. Now you can do what you want to. That ain't what God told me. He said you've got to be the light. You've got to be the example to help lead the people into his truth. God gives us the word. We've got to live the word. We've got to preach the word. We've got to be the word. Amen. And that's why there's so much that's going on in the time that we're living in. Jesus is coming back for a church that has made herself ready. We hear this, we heard this song right here. Hollywood has taught us a lot. And Lord God, there's a lot of things that we try to say is sin that is nothing but our own conscience. Uh -huh. That's what it is. But I'm telling you, Lord God, when the word of God speaks to us. And tells us that we got to get away from things and got to quit doing things. It's time. Why does he send the warning? It's because he's almost, Lord God, he's ready to step out and say, Time shall be no more. We're just about there, Brother Bo. You can read the word of God as you see all these things coming to pass. What's he talking about? We're seeing all these diseases. We're seeing earthquakes. We're seeing all these things coming as it was in the days of Noah, as it was in the days of Lot. So shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Jesus is fixing to come back, and he ain't coming back for a harlot church. He's coming back for a church that's on fire. He's coming back for a church with a God that looks like his word. He's coming back for a church with a God that has not no excuse. He's coming back for a church that says, I love you, Jesus. I want to do what your word says. I know that you're there for me. You're not against me. We're about to hear tonight when you get the call. I know what I pray. I know what the Lord told me. When you get the call tonight, but God, you better come and give your life to Jesus. I ain't just talking to sinners. I'm talking about what God saints also. You better get your things the strength up from Jesus. But God, get your shoes buckled up and say, Lord, I'm ready to walk this last mile. We're almost to the last mile. We're fixing the cross over. Jesus. 
Jesus says. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. We've talked for years. I preached from here at this very same church. Same scriptures. I preached from this place. The Lord's dealt with me on here today. But seem like we're living in a time of a people that is making an excuse for a rebellious church. Every excuse you could imagine yep. is coming their way. You know what? As we just come up here and I'm, I'm bragging on Jesus. I said, oh, Sister Jack, I said, you know it ain't that there ain't God's children. They're just taking stuff. And they rebel. Like witchcraft. They rebel with Jeff over and over. Hearing messages sitting under sitting at Jesus' table and just pull up a seat and they'll eat every night. But there's no change. Oh, glory God, to God, I've got the Holy Ghost right You ever see kids? When I was growing up, I say skinny as a stick. I mean, Philip, at one time, I don't care to tell them. People say, well, you just tell them. You say, I tell them myself. We pull up, what we got, we'd eat. You know what's wrong with some kids? I just, Lord, just put this in my spirit. You know what's wrong with some? They'll sit there and eat. Oh, they're eating all of them. You know what's wrong with them? They're full of worms. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Then let the Holy Ghost worm you. Yes. I'm talking about getting everything out of you that's not like this. Right. you got to get in the spirit. I'm talking about the natural. Lord, drop it in me. And you know what happened when we got wormed? Lord God, we began to get rid of the worms. And we begin to grow when we sit down at the table. You know why we can't grow? The devil, he's the worm. you got to get rid of the worm. Lord God, you know what he's doing? He's taking me to everything that you're putting down. He's getting everything and he's eating it up. He don't want you to have that. God, you say, how can the devil, the devil will set me back toward God right when you're eating and you'll take everything. you say, well, it ain't that way. That ain't what the preacher was talking about. That ain't what pastor was talking about. But it'd be on the anointing, Brother Jeff, and nobody wants to have it in the time that we're living in. But it's time and high time to quit making an excuse for what's going on in the church house. Amen. Come on. List this right here. It's in Luke 14. There's a great supper that's coming. And you got to listen to the last part of this right here because it seems like people today is making every excuse. I don't care what we're in. Hear me? I don't care what pandemic we're in. We're probably going to have another. I don't care what we're in. We can't let nothing shake us off the Word of God. Amen. We can't let not anything shake us from assembling ourselves in the house of God. That's true. This is what we come to eat at. I know we eat at home. I preach that we eat at home. But right here is where we get fed at. Yes. Listen to what the Bible says in Luke 14, verse 16. Let's back up to 15. Luke 14 and 15. And when one of them that sat at meat with him heard these things, he said unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper and bade many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. We're close, church. We're close. They all with one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, I must needs go and see it. I pray thee have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen. And I go to prove them. I pray thee have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife. And therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house being angry said to his servants, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in hither the poor and the maim, and the halt, and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the Lord said unto his servant, Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say unto you that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. Give Lord a hand, you can be seated.
As I thought on this today, you say, well, it ain't going to be excuses. And I know people's making excuses every day. They make them every day. Even Christians. What Christians will make an excuse not to come to church. But we're living down in a time, as I thought on this, when the Lord began to deal with me, he brought me to a place, not over in the scriptures, the same book of Luke, where it talks about a certain rich man. He fared sumptuously every day. Every day. And I believe as, as he had a table there, and there's so many people miss this. You got we got a table when we come in here, and I know it's a spiritual. You can't see the table. But you could feel what God is putting on the table. Amen. You hear what God is putting on the table. And then there's another table that was set out. You got to look at this way right here. This rich man, he sat at this natural table. And he didn't want nothing to do. He lacked something in his life. It's just like the church today. We lack things in our life. You better hear me tonight. We lack things. The seeking after God, I said, Lord, I need a word to shake, to stir the people, to stir, to shake the lost. And they'll come in, Brother Jeff, and they'll set service after service, and there's no change. They'll go back out the doors, and they do the same thing. But here was this rich man, Brother Hunter, that had this table that was spread. The Bible says he fired sumptuously every day. And I believe, Lord God, that everybody has got a chance in this life. After Jesus came and died and gave his life from in you, Lord God, everybody's going to get that call. Everybody that called went out on Calvary. Lord God, everybody's going to get that knock at the door. Why? Because the Bible says uh, it's not God's will that any would perish, uh, but that all would come to repentance. Uh, I believe that a woman, uh, man, boy, or girl uh, that's ever been born in this world, uh, Lord God, has got a call from yeah. Jesus. Uh, Lord God, one day there was a visitation uh, that came their way, uh, and if you pass up the visitation tonight, uh, but that God knock on your heart's door, it could be your last call. Amen. It could be your last call. You hang on, we're going somewhere with this. The brother, Brother Bowen, he's preaching here. I said, Lord, he's going right down the line. He could go right on. Lord, what they won't be on declining, but that's what people's doing. They're taking their just turning Jesus away. Every hour, every minute, when he deals with him, and they're turning him away. But Lord God, Jesus is so long suffering. Jesus is so kind. Lord God, but there's a place, there's a place that we cross over, Lord God, that you can't get back when you listen to me. Listen to me, teenagers. Listen to me, saints of God. There's a place that we cross over. The Lord was given to me today. There's a place for the right that we cross over that we can't get back. We can't get back to eat from the Father's table. We can't get back to have another message. We can't get back to have another kind word. We can't get back to feel the anointing of God again. Come on. Glory to God. Lord, I feel the Holy Ghost. We make every excuse. If there ever was a time that we better live for God, it's right now. Amen. Amen. And you better grab a hold. You appear to get a hold of the horn, horns of the altar. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you look back. Don't turn. That's the reason he said, remember Lot's wife. Amen. We got too many sister Pat that's turning and looking over the shoulder. Lord God, what are you going to do one day when you turn and look over the shoulder and you turn to a pillar of salt in the spirit? You need to get in the spirit tonight. But then there's too many people the mind to wonder about. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, take all this. People need to get a hold of what's in the spirit. You know what they're always looking at? For a big block of salt there. <laughs> Buddy, I'd say she was. But I'm talking about the spirit. We're so close. And I believe there's people right now, right today, they've turned away the table that's spread up here every night. Yep. Yep. They've turned it away. Yep. We're going to get back to Richmond. 
You got to get this. All right, go ahead. To turn this table away. And turn it away. You know what God has done? This is his word. He said he sent strong delusion. There's people probably today sitting right in the church house that think they're right. Think they got everything fixed up with Jesus. And the Lord's given a call right here tonight. He's given more than one. Oh, yeah. And you better not pass up the opportunity. Don't you pass up the opportunity. Make it right tonight. The devil binds you up. You don't play with the devil. You play with fire, you're going to get burned. Yes, amen. You better hear me tonight. You play with fire, you're going to get burned. Come on. I don't care what this flesh, what it wants to do. We better turn loose the flesh. Amen. I told you we better turn loose of this flesh. Yes, God. Resist the devil. And he'll flee from you. You know how we're pulled away? You know how we're pulled away from God? It's our own lust. It's our own lust. Yes. We bring so much stuff on the devil. It's our own lust. It's what our eyes see. Amen. We're drawn away with our own lust when we're enticed. Yes, yes he enticed us, but then we're drawn away. Yes. We want it so bad. But what about what Jesus wants? Amen. What about a little bit of mercy? What about a little bit of kindness? Something that the rich man liked. Yes. But sometimes we want to ride mercy. It's, we ride that grace, ride that grace, ride that grace. Well, listen to what the word says. This is what we're talking about the other night. We've got to balance it out. We've got to rightly divide the word of truth. Right. Grace is there for us. But can we continue in sin? God forbid. That grace may abound. God forbid that we do. When God teaches us, as what the sissy was saying different ones, as God teaches us what he brings us out of. How many times? I've done it. You say, Pastor, I wouldn't say, I've done it. Yeah. How many times? That's what's wrong with this world. The preachers and the pastors stand up like they ain't done nothing. Yeah. Like the Lord God that is guilt free. I'll pay you 90% up to stand in the pulpit. Lord God is yeah. not guilt running all over yeah. the earth. I'm not going to stand and tell lies. I'm not going to stand and tell you a lie. We'll take and look down on somebody so hard. Bless Jesus. Don't give us no right that we go around sin. No. You know what? If we got us a right, <coughs> why can't we pray that they get it right? Right. Where's your heart at? Amen. Where's your heart at? Is it fixed on God? If it's on God, you got a heart like God and after God, right. you know what God, he don't want to see nobody perish. Mm -hmm. So if you got that love that God's got, you don't want to see nobody die and go to hell. Mm -hmm. If I hear about somebody that died, I'm prepared to meet Jesus, my heart breaks. Yeah. I, don't, I don't care if I knew him or not, my heart breaks. Yeah. Why? Because there's a love on the inside of me. Yeah. Look like Jesus put a love on Josh that I don't want to see nobody die. Why? Because it's through him. It's not God's will that any should perish, but that all come to we should have that same love. Lord God, if we got the Holy Ghost, it should be in our heart. Amen. In our heart. So you're getting pumped off the message, or not. You've got to eat this yes. of what's coming to this table. You know what we're, you know what people's doing? I thought of it today, we'll use this as a plate. You ever come? You ever see? I've seen this. See people come through and just stack their plate on full. Oh, man, I like it. I like this. They'll just stack it full. Nick got ready to break. Well, 
you pay attention, they'll go and sit down, then they nibble on it. Mm -hmm. They're going through bragging, I like this, no, oh man, I love that. And a lot of people make that excuse, they say, well, it just depends on who fixed it. Well, amen to an extent. But buddy, when it's God's word. Amen. You hear me? When it's God's word, I don't care who it's preaching out of. Amen. Come on. Your glory. I knew that one guy. I ain't talking about. So you got to use the natural, but people want to stay in the natural. They want to see a big chicken bone or something up here laying. Look up. We can't. We got to walk in the spirit. Right. We got to get in the spirit. I know that we use demonstration, but we have got to get in the spirit. Quit coming through. Building your plate up and nibble on it. Then you walk over, dump it in the trash. Is that all you think about God? You dump his word in the trash. You dump his anointing in the trash. You dump his forgiveness. Look here, he's, I'm talking about he preaches on forgiveness. He preaches on long suffering. Are you dump it in the trash? You're going to leave long suffering one day. Lord God, well, I feel the Holy Ghost. Uh, when he preaches on forgiveness, uh, you better stop dumping forgiveness in the trash. Uh, you're going to need forgiveness one day. Uh, you're going to mess up. Uh, you're going to need Jesus one day. Uh, you're going to need somebody to say, I, so, I forgive you. Uh, you done me wrong. Come say, well, I ain't going to do nobody wrong. Oh, yeah. Come off me. Make every excuse. Justify for their self. Yeah, Rest the scriptures twisted and follow it. Yeah. To their own what? Destruction. Destruction. They're destroying their own yeah. self. This is the W-R-E-S-T. Rest. Yeah. They rest the scriptures. What do you mean, Pastor? When they rest the scriptures, they're twisting them. Bend them or bow them. Yeah. To In other words, let's use me. I'll twist it. I'll bend it and bow it to suit my fancy. Mm -hmm. That way people, it's sad that it seems like people get offended at it, but it's the truth anyway. Oh, I can't rest it to my own. You know what happened? It leads to my own destruction. Yep. Yeah. When I say my family's life to be chores ain't, that's resting the scripture. Yeah. If I get up, preach one thing, and live another, you're resting the scripture. Yeah. But God, it's time for God's children to get off the table and eat off the table. Yeah, people go to God. They say, well, we're going to take and watch your life. You watch the life. But God, if I get out right the word of God, you come and tell the pastor, and I'll make it right. Lord God, that's the problem. There's too many people that don't want to make it right. Like they will fight you all day. You know why? Oh, yeah. And nobody gonna mock you after tonight. I know somebody will. Yes. Jesus will. Come on. Amen. Amen. If I please Him, He'll love me. Yes. Amen. If ever look here, and I love everyone. If everybody walks out, Jesus will send me somebody else to preach to. Amen. We gotta, we gotta get it right, Lord Jeff. If we preach it, Lord God, I know we preach it. Well, He preached love last week. Now He's getting tough. But God, love is tough. Somebody comes to me and just cuss the house. Yeah. Yes. You know what we should do? Thank you, Jesus. Yes. That's right. Ouch. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Help me, Lord, to get it right. Yeah. Because you know why? We got one shot. We got one chance to get to heaven. Yes. Listen to this, what Jesus said here. A lot of people say, they'll say the word of God. They won't take it unless it's Jesus saying it. Well, they don't know who Jesus is. He's the whole book. He's the whole book. Whole book. He's the whole book. But they want to take that part written and read it. That's the part I want. So you're just going to take the four Gospels that's, and just a few places in the other ones where it was what he wrote and repeated and a little bit in Revelation for what he spoke. Pretty much the whole book of Revelation so to John. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. You want to take that? A lot of people want to get in Revelation. You know why? Just they're scared of revelation. Yeah. Scared to death. You know what people's taught it for years? Don't get in there. You know why? They didn't understand it. They didn't have the Holy Ghost, really. Come on. It's right to get in there. Yes. If you don't understand it, why can't we be brave enough? Ask the Lord to get Not something big, but be brave enough just to go to Jesus. Right. Quit being afraid, go to Jesus. Right. He said, if you ask, shall receive. 
going to receive if we're his children. If we ask for bread, is he going to have any rock to chew on? He don't have enough rock. He's going to give me the bread of life. Amen. Right. He's going to give me something that's going to help me. Yes. That's what he's doing tonight. He's been giving us something here to help us. Yes. Amen. Through everything that we've been going through, Jesus is here to help. We think, well, we went through this. What is it? It's to help us. Through all this pandemic, yeah, I'll buy him some. But it was to help me. It got me to where I am now. It'll get you to where you are now. But Jesus is going to deal with hearts in this place tonight. You better wake up. Yes, Jesus. Lost, saved. There's two different categories in here. You're either lost or you're saved. Amen. Come on. You're either wrong or you got it right. If he got it already right, right, you better get it right. right. Because I read the word of God that there's no sin. If there's anything that you think is sin, you better get it out. Because there ain't no sin going to enter into heaven. Amen. Amen. This is the word of God. You say, well, Pastor, that's tough. Lord God, Jesus is tough. You ain't seen tough. Lord God, I'm easy compared to what Lord God, Jesus, uh, when you stand before the Almighty God, uh, you won't be able to look up. Your knees will be knocking up. You say, please, uh, give me another chance, uh, but it'll be over. Amen. We got it right now. We got the chance. Right. We got a chance of a lifetime right now. Yeah. Amen. You say, I'm not feeling nothing. You know what I've been Buddy, I get on my knees. I say, Lord, I ain't feeling the call. I ain't feeling nothing, Lord. I don't want to die lost and done without you. If you're lost and you're not, you don't got Jesus. I'm here to tell you, Lord God, you'll end up in hell. You'll end up in hell. The rich man, I'm going to tell you the truth tonight. The rich man, fired softly, he had the best clothes. He had the best food. He had it all. He had a big palace. But it didn't matter when it came down to death. Amen. That's right. Man. The poor and the rich. Which if we live long enough, whenever our time is that we've got to go, we don't know when it is. But the poor man and the rich man were all going in the same size hole. Amen. You better believe that. Amen. Unless they get cremated, poor can get cremated too. You're still going in the same place. Right. I don't care if they put you in the finest clothes, that ain't going to help you. Sure. They put you in the best casket, ain't going to help you. You better hear me tonight, it ain't going to help you. If you don't know Jesus, it'll never help you. And that's what's wrong with our children that's raising up. We as parents, we are afraid to say anything to hurt their feelings. I'll never get them to come back. Go ahead. Come on, go ahead. You said it right tonight. Hurt the feelings. Yeah. Amen. Hurt the feelings. Let me tell you this right here. Lord's dealt with me on this. You know what's going to take and happen? You may be plumb full of the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues round the aisles. If you won't take and correct your child, you will stand in judgment for not correcting your child. The Lord has dealt and dealt with me on it. God, I have got, Brother Jeff, to correct my children because he said, train them up in the way they should go. People say, well, when they get a certain age, I can't do nothing with them. I beg your pardon. Well, God, if they're living under your roof, you should be able to, Lord God, tell them to live like the Bible says. Well, God, you say, well, I can't make them live right. Well, God, you make them, Lord God, if you got to live it, your child should have to live it. You may not want to agree with that or not, but not your children should have to live it. You can't make them repent. But listen to this. Thank you, Lord. It's, it's heaven or hell. 
He said, well, that's just what the Lord showed you. Well, you can take I'm a man of God or not. How you want to take it tonight? I'm a man of God. If I got to dress a certain way, my kids are going to dress a certain way. When I grew up, I was not allowed to wear what I wanted to wear. You said, man, why are you getting on this stuff? Somebody needs to hear this. Do you know why the world is in the shape that it's in? Us parents. Us parents. We have let down over the years. Mommy and daddy was too rough on me. I'm not being that rough on mine. My hair was one of them. Huh? Right here was one of them. But when I got saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, God began to bring back to me, for God, you got to set your house in order, for God, and make them, for God, wear godly clothes, for God, the way they should, for God, I prayed, and I said, Lord, I let it go so long, I don't know how to deal with it, when he started dealing with me, and you know what God did? He brought them forth, and they began to come to us and say, hey, I've got to do it this way. You do it right and you set the example, they'll come. Mm -hmm. And I know it ain't going too good, but I love you, Jesus. You're right. Go ahead. We let them do what they want to, you know what they do? They'll take over. Yeah. Lord, I gotta say it, Jesus. They'll take over if you do. Brother West said this right once. We let kids run and do whatever they want to do. You know what happens? That's your next drug addict. You better hear me tonight. You let them do what they want to do, and you just let them push everything aside. That's your next drug addict. That's your next prostitute. Because we let them run wild with what they want to do. I can't do nothing with them. They get 16, 17 years old. He can. That's the boys. But they're bigger than daddy. I love my kids, and you better love yours, and you better tell them. I'm telling you, kids, you better listen up in this place tonight. You've made excuse long enough. I'm going to tell it because you know why? I'm going to stand in judgment. I'm going to stand in judgment. You teenagers, you better listen up, and you better listen to what's been preached in here. You've heard it time after time. Maybe not in this church, but you've heard it in other churches, and you know the truth, and you know what the truth do? If you'll come to Jesus, it'll make you free. be wild for a little bit. Well, God, in that wildness, do you know what a lot of teenagers have done? They've left this world uh, unprepared to meet Jesus uh, and they're burning in a devil's hell right now. I'm going to tell the world uh, and I'm going to tell you just like it is uh, because if you don't get right with Jesus, you'll split hell wide open. Right. They don't want to hear about hell no more. Hell's real. But if we allow them, you know what a kid or teenager will do? They'll make every excuse that you can imagine to not come to church. Amen. I've got to do this. Uh -huh. I've got to get that done. I can't go tonight. Do you? Glory to God. Do you know what's more important than anything in this world? Do you know what's more important? Jesus Christ is more important than anything in this world. Let people talk about us. Let people run a stand. But Lord God, there's coming a day when they're running a stand when they're talking about us. You know what they do? And I don't think, I don't say, see, there, I told you I knew the world. I'm not that way. I get on my knees when they call and say, hey, I need prayer. I go and say, Lord, have mercy. But I pray, God, that you save them. But in the mercy, God, you can save them. You can bring them, Lord. Whatever it takes, save them. Don't be afraid to pray that prayer. What the Bible says, my brother, to go into heaven with one eye, then to go to hell with two. Amen. Truth. Or to go to heaven with one leg, then to go into hell with two. Yes. Say, so what are you preaching, Pastor? I say, well, Lord, whatever it takes, you get it. Whatever it takes, Lord, you get them. Get our teenagers. Get our lost. 
get my family to stop. I got, Lord God, I got nieces, nephews. I, I got children, Lord God, that's lost and undone without Jesus. Make every excuse. And once you get come and give your life to the Lord, I'll go ahead and tell you that you are bound. Amen. You give your life to Jesus. Don't let nobody pat you on the back and say you ain't gonna fight no battles. That's what you're to You're gonna fight battles. Yes. But I'm teaching you this right here. Come and come to somebody. When you first get in church, glory to God, that's when we got a church group. Get on there and say, hey, I need prayer. I'm fighting the devil today. Don't be ashamed to say it, Lord God. When I need prayer, but it's if I get on the group and I say, hey, I need prayer. Yes. But say it will take. Push it aside. Push it aside. Push it aside. Every message we're pushing aside. We're living on. But just as quick, Brother Bo said, just as quick as it come through, and we need the uplifting messages. We need encouragement. I preach it. I tell you, encourage one another. Right. But then it's the only ones we want. We want to be a junk food junkie. And then when something comes through, Lord God, that Brother Bo gets right down to where it's putting us to the test, we can't even stand. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's going to take something to make it to the end. We want to pray that, Lord, pray God, gets me out of this. Why don't you trust in Jesus? Jesus didn't reach down, and he could have done it. He didn't reach down and get a hold of the Red Sea and send it over here or pick the children of Israel up and send them over there. You know what they had to do? So many people don't want to do it then. They had to go through. That's right. Amen. We've got a bunch of whinies that won't want to go through it. Right. I was whining. 2020, I was whining. I didn't want to go through it. Everybody don't know, but I didn't want to go through it. But he said, go through it. Go through it and you'll get strength. If you want strength, go through it. Come on. True. Quit making every excuse. Well, I can't. This flesh don't want to do nothing. Come on. You believe that? Amen. Flesh don't want to do what the Word of God says. Right. That's your biggest enemy. Amen. Bigger than the devil. Because all the devil does, he'll poke you. And who's taking you to heaven? Flesh. You are. Yes. You are. Amen. If you're going to hell, you're taking your own self down. Amen. It's your choice. The choice is yours. The invitation is right here tonight. Jesus is in by. He's a knocking. Come to my table. Take my yoke upon me. Learn of me. For I am meek and I am lowly. Lord God, you will find rest for your soul. If you come to me, you will start to find rest. In your battle, you can find rest. I know you may not believe it, but do you understand right here tonight? February the 28th, 2021. This could be your last supper. Amen. Could be the last supper, Brother Bo, we get to eat. And we'll take it lightly. That's another service. Well, we got Wednesday night coming up. You know, there's a lot of people got good intentions. Good intentions. We're going to come Wednesday night. If something happened, they got killed Monday or Tuesday and didn't make it right with Jesus. Good intentions. A lot of people's good intentions. Hell's one full of good intentions. Sure. Yeah, oh, yeah. They didn't make it right. And that's what's wrong right now. You go, go to funeral homes. I know it's getting slowed down, but I'm going to talk to you. You got to get this. Hey, now you just listen up. You go to funeral homes, and you if you know somebody's life, you know what they'll do? They'll preach them right through the pearly gates. 
every time. You know why? I'm going to keep using it. goes right back to what he said. They don't want to hurt no feelings. Right. Man. Don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. You know why? They're hurting enough over there. Oh, God, they lost their loved one. You don't want to preach enough to hurt their feelings. If you'll preach what God tells you, you ever listen to the old preachers? So I'm say they come out there, push a casket out the floor, knock the flowers off of them, start patting the casket. Yeah. Bunch of bikers, you know, I, I, I'm trying to think of a preacher preach that, but I remember listening to it. So you start patting the casket. I don't know if your buddy made it or not. We need that back in the church preaching. We need that back in the funeral homes preaching. Amen. I don't know if they made it or not. You're getting a call tonight. What's it going to be if somebody's packed the casket? I don't know if they made it or not. They didn't come and pray. But do you know what happened? And all the motorcycle gang, a bunch of them went to pour their heart into Jesus. Bunch of rebels. Bunch of rednecks. Bunch of bikers. Bunch of drinkers. But you know what happened years later? They become pastors and preachers. Yes. Why? Because a man of God began to obey God. Yes. And push a, he said, push the casket out in the middle of the floor. Jerk the flowers off of it. Begin to pack. Get down to reality. It's real when they're laying here. There's no more life in the body. But we'll push it and take it lightly ever, after every service. Right. Oh, that was a good one last night. <laughs> better wake up, teenagers. We better wake up, saints of God. Amen. Jesus is coming. And for each and every one of us sitting in here tonight, what's going to happen if we lift our eyes and be in the wrong place? You better know. You better know like Apostle Paul. He says, well, you don't know. You better know. You better know where you're going to end up at. That rich man. I told you it's coming back to the rich man. Lazarus, a beggar. Just desired. He didn't even open his mouth and talk about it. He just desired the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. Desired. He wanted those crumbs. But he had something more than the rich man had. When Lazarus died, the, the Bible says where he died, you know what? It got so bad that the dogs come and licked his sores. He probably wasn't a pretty sight to look upon. Probably a lot of us were just nice to about. Would have been just like the rich man. And you know what happened? Lazarus died. And he was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. But there was something else that took place. That rich man died also. And was buried. And you know what happened to him? When he Opened his eyes. He lifted his eyes in hell. Uh -huh. You know what he saw? He saw a little baker. Yes. Mm -hmm. He saw Lazarus. Yep. In Abraham's bosom. And he said, Father Abraham, could you send Lazarus to me? Listen to me tonight. Could you send the word to me again, Jesus? Can I get right, Jesus? Abraham looked and said, Son, remember, you're going to remember. Yes. I'm remember in your lifetime. You had all these good things. Jesus. Mm 
We had good clothes. For this time, You had good clothes. That's what Jesus said. You got good clothes. You got plenty of food. You got a roof over your head. I've given you good vehicles. But you don't. Give you a good paying job. You got money coming in. But you don't want me. You don't want nothing to do with me. Remember. Can you hear him? Close your eyes and mask yourself if you're in hell. Hear Jesus. Remember. I gave you a call. But you turned me away. I knocked on your horse door, but you turned me away. Rich man said, could you send Lazarus to me? Could you send him to me? Thank you, just one drop of water to comb my tongue. Go ahead. I'm tormented in this way. He could see, he could feel, he could taste, yes. he could hear, he could remember. He had all these senses. Yes. You have every one of yours if you go to that place. It's time for us to get every, every sin out. Get it out of the blood. We better get it out of the blood. We always, you know what the saints will do, Lord's still fit today? We'll take, we hear a message like this. Oh, Lord, he's dead after the sinners. Amen. That's what the Christians do. But it ain't just for the sinners. Amen. It's for the saints. That if we got any sin, if we got any sin, you know what we should pray? Search me, oh Lord. Search me, oh God. Clean me, Jesus. If there's any hidden things that I don't know about, Lord, clean me. Amen. Our thoughts, clean them, Lord. Yes. Anything that runs through the mind, clean me, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. That's not like you. Amen. Hell's going to be an awful place. Went over there when the rich man was talking to Abraham. When he taught him to remember, son, in thy lifetime, you had all this stuff. And Lazarus didn't have anything. But now he's in a place of comfort. Once Lazarus, he had sores all over him, he was in pain. But he's in a place of comfort. And you're in a place of torment. Yes. Look over somebody and say, wake up! Wake up. Wake up. Hell's real! <laughs> After tonight, you will never stand in judgment. Say that I didn't have a chance because God's going to give a call. He's a calling right now on hearts. That rich man wanted out there so bad, but Jeff wanted out so bad. He was in torments. More than one. Pain all over him. Wishing he had another chance. Wishing. He could go back. He would have fed Lazarus off that table. He'd have said, hey. He'd have pulled a seat and said, sit down with the king. Sit down with this rich man. I've been to hell and I don't want to go back. Do you know what he wanted? It worked out. If we got any family member that has left your unprepared to miss Jesus. God give him an opportunity to grab this mic here tonight 
Every one of us will be in that altar if they went to hell. Yes. You better hear me. They can grab this mic. I don't care who it is. Every one of us will be in that altar. Because we ain't hurt straight, Brother Josh. We think we've hurt straight, but we ain't hurt straight. They'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The awful swelling, the awful screaming you've ever heard will be in hell. Absent from God. You know what the rich man wanted to do? I'm just about through it. Because I feel the calling. I feel God's calling. He's calling. He's calling. You know what the rich man wanted? Since he's seen that he couldn't get out of hell. When he seen he couldn't have the water. Hey, Abraham, will you send Lazarus back to my father's house? Because I've got five brothers, Lord Jesus. I've got five brothers. In other words, that don't know who Jesus is. And they're following the same steps that I follow. You say, well, the Bible don't say you better get in the spirit. Why they want he, Lazarus to go and his five brothers, they was following the same steps the rich man was following. Right. Go warn them. Tell them don't come to this awful place. Tell them to be kind. Tell them to have long suffering. Tell them to be merciful. Tell them if somebody comes to feed them. You better hear me tonight. I feel the Holy Ghost running all over me. What Jesus said. He said, I was hungry and you fed me not. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. In prison and you visit me not. Do you understand? We got family. It's in prison. In their, in their mind, they're talking to Jesus. You better hear me. With above, they're talking to Jesus. They don't know how to get it right. It's in prison. God's will that anyone would perish. You say, what are you talking about, Pastor? Lord's dealing with me on this. I said, in prison. I ain't talking about going to the local and regional or to Charleston or anywhere. I'm talking about they're locked up. Yes. They're locked up. And they're crying. Get me out of here. Get me out of here. Get me out of here. Get me out. We don't know how. If we just go to it when the Lord speaks to us. Do you understand? They're going to go to hell. Going to hell. They don't know how to get out. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We'll sit at the table. We'll eat. The Lord speak now. Go take it to it. We don't have lost teenagers. I know who you are. Jesus knows who you are. It's time for you to get real with Jesus. Tomorrow could be too late for you. I got it in my family. It's taking time of the day. Among all different ages that has left this world. A lot of times we don't think, we just take life for granted and we get a phone call. Had a first cousin. Was it Monday or Tuesday? 
Monday or Tuesday, I'd say, left this work. Josh went to school with him. Josh was age. So I could be on to die. Better wake up. Quit playing. Quit playing the cards that the devil's dealt you. <coughs> Jesus is calling you. You can take and wrap with things and play with things all you want to. To get it off your mind. But I've been praying this week. And I'm going to pray it stays on your mind if you don't give your life to Jesus. I'm going to pray that you become miserable. You say, Pastor, what's wrong with you? Our teenagers need to wake up. Amen. Jesus is coming. Saints, we need to wake up. If there ever was a time. See my baby, sir? You ask any of them. If they do wrong, they don't get corrected. You know why? I'm going to stand in judgment. I'll stand in judgment for my children. A lot of times things is hindered from us. We're hindered because we won't listen to God. Right. What did God tell me? He said, I will hide nothing from Abraham. You know why? Seeing that he will teach his children my ways. If we teach our children God's ways, He will hide nothing from us. Amen. And I believe when we was growing up, I couldn't hide nothing from mommy and daddy. You know why? Mommy and daddy was teaching me. If I try to get someone to do something, you know what it was? It was the Holy Ghost. She always knew. Mom always knew. Dad always knew. Same way with the kids today. Is it not? Ask the boys. They'll tell you before they come to the Lord. They get out and try to do Kids, yeah, they're going to try to do stuff behind your back. Yeah, they do. But if you're telling them, and you're teaching them, and you're training them, you want the Holy Ghost to do, it will reveal the secrets. Amen. You're going to get right into deep thoughts. And it'll tell them, the Holy Ghost is a revealing. Yes. You're at teenagers. Holy Ghost is a revealer. He'll tell on you. What you're doing out of mommy and daddy's sight, he'll tell on you. Yes, he will. So you better get right with Jesus. You know what might happen? We don't need to look down if it does. Lord, thank you, Jesus. I'm just reminding the Lord. Because I'm going to stand in judgment. Yes. Do you know what happens sometimes? I know I said I've just got through, but i got to do this here. The Lord just barked in my mouth. If we're messing around places we shouldn't be messing around, you can get forgiveness. Okay? But if something shows up that you don't want to show up, Make it right with Jesus. Okay? Make it right with Jesus. You know what I'm talking about. I shouldn't even have to go into detail. What goes on out there? We've said it here. Fix to be a lot. Come on the scene. Yes. Buddy, when it comes on the scene, you know what that means? There ain't the one way I can get that. That means somebody's in the meanness. You can't hide that. You might hide it for a little while. But buddy, when God shows light on it, it'll manifest itself. Yes, it will. So you know what I do? I wake up. So man, can you get like that and they love me? Yeah, they will. I love mommy and daddy. They're tough on me. They're tough on us, Ronnie. Tough on us, Sister Pat. You better get tough on them. Hell's waiting on them. I'm telling you the truth about hell's waiting on them. If we just pat them on the back, oh, it's all right. That look at little sissy. Just. <laughs> you 
like that now. You'll be laughing later. But you'll cry later. Cry. I remember Bowling used to tell me. Sometimes you say, man, I wish the kids were to grow up. And let me say, one kid will live where they're stepping on your toes. Because one day they're going to step on your heart. Yeah. Buddy, how true it is. Yeah. Keep them out to earn your toes. Yeah. Let them be aggravated to you. They say, well, man, you got a 25 year old baby. Hey, man, yeah. I'm going to keep him in Jesus. I'm going to keep her in Jesus. Right. But all at the same time, you got to be tough. Yeah, they might run astray for a little while. But if you do your point and start praying, you watch them start coming back to the Father's house. Jesus is calling right here tonight. If you don't want to go to hell, if you don't want to go to hell, right here is where I'd be. But if you want to be stubborn, you sit there, do you know you can, hell can be your home? It's that easy. It's your choice. I can come and pull you off the seat. Pull you in here and push you down and say, pray. You'll get back up and go out the door and make you that much more harder to get the next time. But buddy, if you'll come when the Spirit's offending you, he's offending you tonight. I said he's offending you tonight. If you'll get off your seat. Teenagers, middle age, old, if you'll get off your seat tonight. And say, I'm walking out this right now. I'm walking out this situation. Goodbye, Broadway. Hello, Jesus. You got to tell the devil, goodbye, Broadway. Hello, Jesus. That Broadway is going to take you down to hell. But there's a narrow way that leads you to Jesus. I'm asking you to come right now in the name of Jesus while you have a chance. God's merciful. God's kind. He's tender. He's loving. He's long-suffering. He's all about what we preach. But at the same time, He is a God of wrath. He's a God that keeps His word. He's a God that will go against His word. When He says sin will abound there, it ain't going to abound there. When He says if you ain't born again, that you're going to hell, you're going to hell. He can't go against his words. So you know what I'd do? I'd step out of my seat and say, Jesus, I'm coming to you. You're going to pass it up one too many times. Lord, I feel this in my name. You're going to pass it up one too many times. How about it tonight? How about coming to Jesus? Why don't you cry? Cry, Jesus.
the truth and then talk the truth and then write in the truth. Listen to the saints cry. Now you'll never hear another saint cry. If you've got a hell, you'll never hear another cry.
big in the bag. The other night, you think I should have just obeyed God. This ain't me and me, but we all get kind to me. But you got to listen to what the Spirit says. The other night, the Lord said, come and get these for your children.
found this last week. So what I'm trying to tell you, what the Lord's going to be telling you on that, you come in God's presence, and don't start to get afraid. You can't get that spirit of fear. Oh, my Lord, what kind of devil is that? Buddy, the devil got a bound. Get ready. Get prayed up. Say, they're coming. Show them love. In all that, you still got to show them love. But you got to stand your ground. You can't let them run over you. Stand your ground and show them love. Say, yeah, you're welcome to come in here, but you're going to do right. Mommy and Daddy loves you. You're going to do right, son. They said, well, man, they turn away and say, I'm going to come in there. This is what the devil will do just to get you to give in. And he'll start fighting your mind. And has mine. You start fighting your mind before the kids came. And they're going to go down to the yard. They ain't going to have nothing to eat. They're going to have a roof over their head or nothing. You're going to fight that spirit. But guess what? If you will stand your ground and keep on praying and do what the Bible says, you know what happens? Here they come. They'll come back. I'm just learning to be obedient to God, okay? Just like you. If we just learn, learn to be obedient, watch what God will do. Watch what He's going to do for us, every one of us. And you that God will deal with tonight, I don't know if you're going to be probably tomorrow or not. I'm just being real with you. You may have, we could have an accident, any of us. On our way home tonight, Brother Lawrence lives right here. It's probably the closest one to the church. He could have an accident before he got home. Do we understand that? Well, I said, well, man, they're traveling a long way. You know what normally happens? Or just, most time it happens real close to your house, an accident. Real close to home. For the most time they happen. A lot of people are killed real close to their house. Well, James was. Right over the hill. Maybe you're the accident first before he left his home. His sister Donna, minutes, probably what a minute or two, he was gone. So don't tell me. He's going to work. Give her a kiss just like any ordinary day. When he walked down the steps there from that tunnel, I don't think Brother Jamie the Lord spoke to him and said, I'm going to kill you if you're just going to miss. That ain't God. But you thought he read it. Just a little while. He walked down the steps, got his vehicle, started down the road. Probably, I, I drove many times, y'all did too. It probably ain't even, it ain't 30 seconds down where he's at. He was gone. Yes, little Miles? I think that's what it is. If it had been about over a hunt, you could have seen it from your house. But that's the truth. You would have seen it from your house. So it's very important. Don't cross over. God dealt with hearts in there tonight. You know I'm going to pray. Lord, be merciful. Be kind. But all at the same time, Jesus, save us. I've got family. You've got family. we all got family flaws. And buddy, I'm asking. I want to see them saved. 